Hey Cloud Gurus and welcome to this episode of Azure This Week. In this episode, we're going to look at three updates from Microsoft Azure. The public preview of the new and improved Azure Elastic Database jobs, event triggers for Azure Data Factory, and finally, a number of Azure services have been updated to support availability zones. Let's start with the public preview of Azure Elastic Database jobs. Elastic Database jobs have been around for quite some time. What they do is give you the ability to run T-SQL commands in parallel across a number of SQL databases. It's a great way to reduce operational overhead, generate reports, and manage a large number of databases. The existing service had either a customer hosted or managed option, whereas this new service in preview is a completely hosted in Azure service with no further components to install or configure simplifying the process significantly. This release also makes it a lot easier to automate and execute a number of tasks in T-SQL, such as performance monitoring and schema updates using either PowerShell, REST, or the T-SQL APIs. This service makes up part of the Azure SQL database services and is free to use during the preview. So to get started, head on over to Getting Started documentation at the link below. Next up is event triggers for integration with Azure Data Factory. Azure Data Factory enables you to automate and orchestrate data movement and transformation in Azure. These workflows are called pipelines. They can ingest data from various sources, such as blob storage, process and transform that data with various compute services, such as HD Insight, and then output that data to various data stores, such as Azure SQL Data Warehouse. Until today, you had the option of starting your pipelines on a schedule or a tumbling window. But now you have the option of adding an event trigger to kick off your pipeline. This feels to me like a much more natural way to kick off those pipelines following the loading of some data into some source. The supported source is Azure Blob Storage and it's super easy to set up the trigger. You just simply select the event option when creating the trigger in the portal. You have the option of triggering the pipeline when a file has been created, deleted, or both. It does also give you some controls and configuration over which blobs you wish to trigger on by defining the blob path begins with and blob path ends with parameters. This feature is now available, so you can create event-driven architectures with your Azure Data Factory pipelines from today. Finally, let's take a look at a number of services that have this week announced support for availability zones. As you may know, Azure announced availability zones last year and are in the process of rolling these out to various regions around the globe. Alongside this, it seems that the various products and services are also starting to add support for availability zones within their products to enable high availability and resiliency of applications hosted within a single Azure region. The first two services we're going to talk about are Azure Service Bus and Azure Events Hubs. Both services now have support in preview for AZs in Central US, East US 2, and the France Central regions. Note, this is only available for new namespaces within Service Bus and Event Hubs, and you cannot update existing namespaces to be zone redundant. To enable zone redundancy on new namespaces in Service Bus or Event Hubs, you just simply make the namespace zone redundant box checked within the portal, or if you're using ARM templates, set the zone redundant parameter to true. The other service to add support for availability zones is a slightly different one, Express Route and VPN gateways. You now have, in public preview, the option to deploy what is now called a zone redundant gateway, which will automatically be deployed in a zone redundant fashion across availability zones. You also have the option to deploy zonal gateways, this gives you the option to deploy a gateway into a specific availability zone of your choice. When you do this, all instances of the gateway will reside in that availability zone. This service is not automatically available to you and you will need to self-enroll your subscription into this service. Once you've done this, the new zone redundant and zonal SKUs will be available for you to check out and deploy. The link to the Getting Started Guide and how to self-enroll is below. And that's it for this episode of Azure This Week where we looked at the public preview of the Azure Elastic Database jobs, event triggers for Azure Data Factory pipelines, and a number of services that have added support for availability zones. Until next week, keep being awesome, Cloud Gurus. <laughs>